again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to have a bit of a serious debate. The current state of the game. Is it broken? Is there any cause for concern? Now I've been having a lot of messages recently saying the MM is all screwed up, the game is broken, it's just no fun anymore, it's full of muppets, blah blah blah. And I'll say straight off the bat, first and foremost, this is going to be quite an opinionated video. And it's my opinion, simple fact of that. Secondly, some of the clips you're going to see have absolutely no relation to what we're talking about. They just happen to be there to give you something to look at whilst I get on my little soapbox and ramble away. However, I will show some videos um, to sort of justify some of my points. But let's get the big elephant in the room out of the way first. Let's talk about Wargaming. Now, first and foremost, I am not affiliated to Wargaming. I play the game. I don't have any press accounts, I'm not sponsored by them, uh, I don't work for them, blah blah blah. I, I have nothing to do with Wargaming, I am not part of their business model or the decision making process. You need to understand that because what I'm going to say is going to annoy a lot of people, but unfortunately it is the truth. Wargaming is a business and like all businesses they need profit to survive. So a couple of things you need to understand here. It costs time and money and all that sort of stuff to produce this game. Wargaming are never going to give us this game free of charge from the bottom of their hearts. They don't sit in mint saying, let's give the world something for free and bugger our profit. It doesn't work that way. It's a business, pure and simple. They are here to make money. And how do you make money? Well, you make money by getting more people to buy your product. The game itself, funnily enough, is free to play. You can play this game completely gratis. It will take you a long time to grind all the tanks, to get all the crew experience, and you'll get no premium tanks. It's as simple as that. But for all intensive purposes, the game is free. You don't need to spend a penny. That is important. Secondly, like all businesses, it cannot survive on repeat business alone. It needs new customers. Simple. All businesses need this if they are to grow. So Wargaming need to firstly entice and attract new clientele. And secondly, it needs to retain that new clientele. It's a pure and simple business model, simple economics. So a lot of what Wargaming actually do is to expand and grow their business. Now, Everything started to sort of go downhill with the grand culling that was update 5.5. For all intensive purposes, the feedback that Wargaming were getting was that they were not retaining for any period of time new clientele, i.e. new players. New players were coming in and they were leaving. Okay, I don't agree with <clears throat> Wargaming's, to be blunt, piss poor excuse that this was because of seal clipping. I don't buy that. Because I go back to when I started the game, I didn't know what a bloody seal clipper was. I just thought I was, you know, there were better players than me and I was getting pummeled. Simple. In fact, not much has changed since 2014. I'm still a noob, I still get pummeled, and I still don't know what seal clipping is. So I don't buy that piss poor argument that it's all about seal clipping. What I do, however, believe is that new players were disenfranchised because of the tech trees. It was taking them too long to grind to those big derpy gun tanks. Two things in my view are to blame for that. One is us YouTubers always showing the big derpy guns and the T-Rex battles and the fantastic gameplay because people watch that and they want that they want to do that they want to roll out in a 183 and smack something for over a thousand damage and watch it erupt they want to get in a leo one and drive around shooting everything that moves so that's number one 
And number two, people nowadays are just impatient. Nobody wants to do those long grinds anymore. They want those big tanks. They don't want to sit there with a little pew-pew gun, you know, go with a tank they've never heard of, grinding tracks in different turrets and different guns in different types of tanks. They want to get up that tech tree as soon as possible to those big guns. That's why Wargaming was struggling to retain the player base. So, in their infinite wisdom, they decided to trim the tech tree and they streamlined it now i'm not going to sit here and say i agree with that because i don't i totally don't agree with that i think they made a huge mistake for a few reasons firstly the idea of any game realistically is firstly to be challenged and secondly, for the game to become progressively harder as you advance through it. With the streamlining of the tech trees and the other things that they introduced at that point sort of changed that parameter quite radically, if the truth be known. But more about that in a moment. The other thing that we have to appreciate is this. Wargaming not only needs to entice new players, but it needs to retain current players and those players that they've now enticed so they have to keep tinkering with the game to keep it relatively fresh and when they tinker with it they change the mm and they change the rng and they change the maps and they change the parameters of the tanks and it's all based on periodic stats i mean th these guys don't just sit there one day and say oh, change a tank they actually have, you know, oodles of data that they go through to look out which tanks need changing, which tanks don't. That's not to say they get it right all the time. We've seen recently why on earth the KV-1 suddenly got nerfed is beyond me. I mean, apparently players were complaining that it was OP <laughs> or difficult to pen. It, firstly, it's never OP, and it was never that difficult to pen. Okay, it was a formidable opponent, but you could play against it, for Christ's sake. And if you're finding this tank difficult to play against, then guys, you're not understanding the game, and you're playing it wrongly. And to change the parameters of tank to make it easier just goes to show how much they're trying to overinflate the, the, the view that you have on your own skill level. And then they went on and buffed the KV-220T. What the fuck? I mean, that tank was actually harder to pen than the KV-1. What on earth were they thinking? Well, the KV-222 is a tank you buy. And yes, okay, it did have piss poor pen. But now it's almost OP. And now it's still impossible to pen. And now it's got good pen. Uh, clearly something not right there. Same goes with the KV-2. Um, you know, a lot of people clearly complained that tank was being too OP. I don't think it is, but, you know, that's a different kettle of fish. And Wargaming have been listening to that. So, again, they've tinkered with it. And it's not the tank it used to be. And don't get me wrong, they have to balance the tanks, rightly or wrongly. But I think these tanks have been tinkered with because new players are struggling in their skill levels and understanding of the game, not because the tanks are OP. And that, I think, is fundamentally wrong. And don't get me wrong, I do not, and I am not sat here saying that what Wargaming have done with these buffs and nerfs is correct, because to a large extent I don't think they are. You know, I don't think the KV-1 needed to be toyed with. I don't think the KV-2 needed to be played with either. But that's just my opinion. And I am one out of, you know, quite a few hundred thousand players that are out there playing this game. Which brings me on to another point. Players. There are numerous types of players playing this game. There are your pro players who are ultra serious and uh, you know very good at the game and play it for money there are your serious players who love the game and want to improve at the game and want to get better at the game there are your players who are just jumping in every now and then because they enjoy the game and it's one of many games that they play and then there are the fair weather players you know the, the ones who just play it you know once in a blue moon 
not every single player on this game is going to take it firstly ultra seriously secondly uh, it's going to play it religiously every day and they have no interest in you know being great they play it because it's a game some of us play it because you know we enjoy the game we enjoy rolling out in those tanks and trying to do the best we can but not all players are going to be like that and you have to understand that you know we're all different people and the game has to try and entice and appeal to all those different types of players so wargaming has this big juggling act to play with now however some of the things i don't agree with which has led to a lot of discontent and a lot of what players are whinging about at the moment let's talk about premium tanks now when i first picked up this game way back in 2014 there were only a couple of premium tanks okay now i can't compare the game now to what it was then i mean it's evolved like everything and it's evolved in a particular direction and that direction is business direction it's, it's nothing to do with you the player so get that out of your mind to begin with over time they've introduced more premium tanks which is not bad i mean i don't disagree with it to be honest with you however since update 5.5 there has been a major sea change that i totally disagree with almost every week now there is a new premium tank and it's too much i have a garage on every server and this is my garage on the na server as you can see i've played 49 battles on the na server i have got one ace medal and i have a 75.5 percent win rate but we'll get to that later i've got zero military honor and I haven't actually done anything to set the world on fire on this server because I'm just starting out on this server. Thing is, the following. I am effectively a new player. Wargaming doesn't know that I've got a main account on EU. So for all intents and purposes, I'm a brand new player and, you know, I've just come to the game. This is my garage on the North American server. And as you can see, I'm being offered a T-55A. I have a Panzer II. I have a Panzer 35T. And, you know, I'm starting to grind away. And here we get interesting. I've got nothing above Tier 4. All of a sudden, I've got a Rudy. It's a tier 7 tank. I've done 49 battles. Can I play the Rudy? Do I know the Rudy? Do I understand the Rudy? No. Then I've got a tier 10 tank. I've got the T22 medium. Because, like all the player base, I was allowed to buy crates. And I got the T22 medium. And it only took me two crates to get that tank in this garage. I then got another tier 7 and a tier 8. Now... If I was a completely brand new player, I cannot play those tanks, guys. It's a simple fact of life. I just can't do it. I do not have the experience or the knowledge to play those four tanks. Yet I am being offered, and in fact, I've got those four tanks. And I've just, you know, these are the only four I've got in that garage at the moment. Because, like I said, I mean, I can't afford to spend money on every single garage. It's just not possible. I am not a Russian oligarch. But that is one of the major problems with this game. That a player of my stature on this server with 49 battles can buy a tier 10 tank and roll out at tier 10. Because I would be useless. Which brings me back to this screen. My win rate. In America, I have got a 75.51% win rate. On my main account, I've only got a 52.68% win rate. Does this mean I'm a better player in North America? Of course it doesn't. What it means is I, because I am a new player in North America, am being treated to bots and a lower caliber gameplay. That has grossly inflated my ability to the point that I now think I am amazing. I am one of the best players on that server. 
now I understand, of course, that I'm bringing a lot of my knowledge and experience and skill base that I've accumulated over the time on the EU server to this server. But that doesn't remove the point because I know of new players with such win rates who haven't got alternative accounts. Because when you're playing against bots, and these are bots, it's pretty easy to get these type of win rates, guys. Because bots don't fight back, I mean, look at them. And the thing is, you see these new players with their shiny premium tanks and this experience trying to bring that into the upper tiers, and it doesn't work. Because you're no longer playing bots, you're now playing a real human being who's got experience and knowledge and understanding of the game, and he's going to wipe the floor with you. And all I'm going to do is frustrate myself and piss them off. And that is what I think the root cause of the problem. For Wargaming to change the parameters so that players with very low battle counts can rush through these tiers with their limited knowledge and limited experience ruins the game for everybody. And I don't just mean the veteran players, I literally mean everybody. Because when if you know there's no fun in losing nobody likes losing and there's no fun in being seal clubbed at the higher tiers and if i would have rolled out in that t22 as a new player i would have been seal clubbed to death by the better players with the more experience so why on earth can i buy that tank and why on earth am i allowed to then roll out in that tank that is the problem in my opinion wargaming in trying to grow their business have oversaturated the game with higher tier premiums you no longer need to grind let's be honest why do i need to grind all the way through when i can buy premium tanks and those upper tiers i don't need to grind at all so what incentive is there for me to learn the game there's none I just stick my two fingers up to Wargaming and everybody else and say, bugger it, I can now roll out in Tier 10. Why? Because I've done 49 battles and I've got a Tier 10 tank. And even if I didn't have a Tier 10 tank, I can roll out in Tier 8. Because why? Because now I have a Tier 8 premium tank. And this is the thing. We're, we're, the, the players are allowed to jump far too quickly. And that goes against the grain of most games because most games you have to complete the stage before you get to the next stage and the way i view all you know world of tanks blitz is just like that the tiers are stages and you have to be good at the first tier to get to the second tier and on and on and on Wargaming are giving us the opportunity to disregard that, screw the game, screw the challenge, screw the getting better and understanding it, and just jump straight in at the top tier. That is just a money grab. Now I understand they need to make money, but there are different ways to make money, realistically. And doing it this way doesn't help the player base. As I said, in my view, you know, if I was a new player and I bought my little shiny tier 10 and I went out there and I got smacked every game, then I would be frustrated and disappointed. More importantly, if I was a new player with a 75.5% win rate in my tier 10, thinking I'm super shit hot and went out there and died and got smacked after doing next to no damage, I would be really pissed off. And I would think that there's something wrong with the game because it can't be me. I've got a 75% win rate. I'm, I'm a super duper unicum. I'm a brilliant player. How is it that I'm no longer a brilliant player when I go into another tier? Not only that, but when I roll out into tier 10 with my 75% win rate and my 49 battles, I'm just going to piss off the people in my team because I'm, gonna, you know, I, I'm not going to have a clue about how to play that tank in real terms. Yeah, I think I do, because Wargaming have told me I'm a great player. I think I'm a great player. And why can't I just take my tier 10 and do exactly what I'm doing here in my tier 1? Because you'll get absolutely fucking slaughtered. And that is no fun for anybody at the end of the day. And that would make me leave the game. 
what I would do is seriously remove the win rate for say your first 100 battles so you know there's no win rate calculated when you're playing against the bots that way your ego doesn't get over inflated and then when you get a little bit of experience and knowledge that's when your win rate starts to kick in and it'll be a fair reflection of your true skills but you know we're never going to change their, their business strategy so it's no point whinging about that and wargaming to an extent understand that they've slightly screwed up a little bit so they've introduced a new mm well they introduced a new mm actually with 5.5 and that mm in 5.5 was to effectively ring fence new players so they didn't come across the seal clubbers and it was also to stop the seal clubbers going back down and effectively seal clubbing now that must have worked because for a long time you didn't get to see the newer players we know that it must have changed because they introduced bots for the new players so there were at least possibly three different types of mm there's one for the bots there's one where new players are ring fenced and they don't get, they only get to play new players as well without playing the seasoned veterans and then there's everybody else what we don't know is how the parameters were set did you face bots for 100 games did you face bots for 1000 games did you play you know play players of your skill level as a new player for 1000 games or whatever when did you get to meet the veteran players there's a lot of speculation a lot of people saying oh it's when you get to 5000 you start seeing them but uh, that seems a big figure to me but it may have been now on the eu server um, and the asian server they've introduced another mm and this one is basically a modification and it's obviously a trial run because it's not been rolled out in North America or the RU server. And this new MM is going to effectively put players who underperform into a different queue. Again, we do not know the parameters. It could be after 10 games, it could be after 100 games, it could be after 1,000 games. You don't even know what type of players are going to be penalised. Is it those who constantly score zero? Is it those who are constantly only hitting 30%? or whatever we just don't know so those of you thinking that you're going to see a major change in the mm well, you're not going to see that guys um and even if the you were put in the in in the queue for the underperforming players you're not going to see that either. you're not going to know you're in that queue and to get in that queue is not a badge of honor i mean you've clearly got to underperform and, but you don't know what the parameters are for becoming an underperformer, which is a good thing. But it's clearly Wargaming have realised that the higher tiers are being flooded by players who just cannot perform in those tiers. It's a consequence, and it's a consequence of giving everybody premium tanks in the upper tiers and streamlining the tech trees. And um, this is the thing, you know, Wargaming need to understand that. They need to understand that the state of the game, why you've got to introduce this new MM, is be, is a repercussion and a consequence of what you did when you tinkered with 5.5. You take away the tech tree, you take away the ability to people to learn the game and get used to the game, and they're going to underperform when they get to the upper tiers. And it's going to piss everybody off, the new players and the old players alike. So you've now got to introduce a new MM to redress this issue. It's just pathetic. And Wargaming are never going to admit that they screwed up with 5.5. But you know, deep down, I think they know they did. And since 5.5, they've been doing almost everything in their power to sort of roll the clock back, so to speak. But the problem is, all this has a negative effect on the game. You start getting more salty players. And you start getting more arrogant players. Um, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, on the North American server, if I was a new player, I've got a 75% win rate. I am shit hot. You all need to kneel and bow and pray to me. Bullshit. But you see that. You see these players who have cut 
their trade playing bots, thinking that they're really good and therefore their opinion matters. Yet they know jack squat. They have zero experience. Um, they generally make the wrong moves, have the wrong strategies, go to the wrong places. And they generally die quickly. And then they have the audacity to run around screaming and shouting at everybody. That doesn't help either. The other thing that you start to see more of is what we call the seasoned clubbers. These are the guys who've done 20, 30,000 battles in tiers 3 and 4, for example, who are now starting to come to the higher tiers because it's so difficult for them in the lower tiers. And whilst they've got nice win rates and they've got plenty of battle experience, they have no experience in the upper tiers. And to an extent, that is, becomes blatantly obvious. Now, I'm not calling anybody out here. I mean, if people want to play the game in just tiers 4 and 5, that's up to them. But because of the way the parameters have been changed by Wargaming, it's generally forced these people into the upper tiers where they're outside of their comfort zone. And that becomes apparent. Not only that, I mean, this is a ratings battle, by the way. Um, the other thing is they've changed the parameters of ratings. So it used to be that you could roll out in tiers 7, 8, 9 and 10 in ratings. Now you can't. Now you're stuck with a single tier. So previously the first trial was tier 8 and now it's tier 10. So even ratings now isn't skill based anymore because you've got to throw the player base on the MM in a tier. So it becomes a devalued encountered battle. And a lot of, you know, I haven't played a lot of ratings recently because, to be honest with you, I just don't find it fun anymore. Because some of the teams just really, really suck. And, you know, I did calibration and I went from Platinum League to Silver League in 10 easy movements. Not based on anything I'd done wrong in particular, but I had 10 truly dreadful teams. And it just basically put me off playing ratings battles because I'm sat there thinking, oh, what's the point? Uh, at the end of the day, I, I, I play ratings because I've, it's meant to be more skill based and clearly it it's not. Simple fact. Now I understand why they've done this because they're trying to entice people into playing ratings because not many people did. But what they've done is devalued what ratings actually is. And you know, to be honest with you, I for one haven't played many ratings battles since they introduced this 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 parameter of keeping it to a single tier. Because, you know, I have now more fun in encounter battles. At least in encounter battles, I know I'm going to get some bad teams. In ratings, I expected to have a matchmaker that was almost similar. But it's not worked out that way. And it's put me off ratings, to be perfectly frank with you. Now, I've already touched on the amount of premium tanks that there are in the game at the moment. Which is too many. I mean, there's a premium tank almost twice weekly now. But the, the other thing that is alarming me is what is due to come. Now, I am waiting with eager anticipation the pan-European line. And then I saw some of the stats. I don't have a Progetto. I, I know some people have been testing it and it's going out there. But I've seen the stats on it on Blitzstars. I mean, this thing has an obscene DPM. It has a DPM of over 4,000. And it's an auto-loading auto-loader. And... If you look at the tanks from tier 8 to tier 10 in this proposed tech tree, they're all super duper auto loading auto loaders in the Italian line. Now, I never knew the Italians had such fantastic tanks, to be honest. But then again, I never knew that the non existent Foch at tier 10 had an amazing auto loader either. Couple that with the fact that. The recent addition of the British TDs had new consumables, which some have uh, claimed are akin to what we had in the Mad Games. Now being introduced to the British Evy line also makes you scratch your head in wonderment. Now I've been told, or I've heard, that when Wargaming proposed these new consumables for the British TDs, then the British Heavies, a lot of people said, no, don't do it, it's a bad idea. But they've done it nevertheless. And I look at them as a gimmick, to be honest with you. And I'm going to tell you a little story about one of my cousins. Now, my uncle and his family lived in this 
interesting seaside resort called Blackpool where they owned a few hotels. And at the end of October every year they have what's called the end of the Blackpool Illuminations where they turn all the lights on or whatever it is. And you know all the sort of budding entrepreneurs which are akin to the carnival type people come out onto Blackpool Promenade and sell you their crappy wares. And my cousin was one of these people. And I'll never forget, we were there one day and he came rushing in with this balloon, this very big sausage balloon, you know, normal balloon that you blow up. And this thing was about eight foot long. I mean, it was massive. And he was in all of a panic because his balloon apparently had a puncture. And I said to him, why are you in a panic? You've got a bag of like 500 of the bloody things there. Just blow another one up. And he looked at me and said, I can't because these only grow to about, you know, 40 centimetres in length. And he's selling them for a pound of bloom, saying that they grow to eight feet when clearly they don't. And it was a gimmick. It was a gimmick to get you to believe that you were buying something or getting something that was big. And I, I look at these consumables much the same way. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> why would you want a welding repair kit, really? I mean, it, it, it doesn't really do much for your game. The extra adrenaline may help, but the welding repair kit, really? Or the reactive armor, really? It, they're gimmicks, guys. And, you know, it's, it's to make you feel that the tanks can be better. The fact of the matter remains that the British line of tanks are good tanks. They're just difficult and notoriously difficult to play. And therein lies the second problem. Wargaming are changing the parameters of the game in regard to the tanks because the player base is not as experienced or as skilled as they should be to play those tanks. Now, if you look at some of the better players, so I don't know any really good player who would tell you that the FV215B is a bad tank. In fact, I know some of the better players who absolutely adore that tank. It's a fantastic tank. The same as the FV202. These are really good tanks, but they're not the easiest tanks to play. So to change the parameters of these tanks by giving you something to make it a better tank isn't because the tank's shit, it's because the player base nowadays is struggling. And they're struggling because they've rushed the tears and they've got a lack of experience and all that sort of jazz. If the tanks were truly crap, then they would buff them somewhere. Um, they would increase the armor or something. Would they not? No, of course, the tanks aren't crap. They just need to give you a gimmick to entice you as a newer player to play those tanks because a lot of people are not playing them because they're so difficult to play but this is the point when you get to tier 10 it's not meant to be easier guys and that's the whole point you're meant to grind your way through the tiers so when you finally get to tier 10 you have the knowledge and experience to play at that level and what we're seeing here is the consequences of 5.5 whereby you have devalued the knowledge and the experience required to get into the upper tiers by allowing the players to rush there either through the tech tree or by buying these premium tanks and you've saturated the player base and oversaturated the mm with players who really don't belong in these tiers yet and therein lies the issue and this is why the player base realistically is disenfranchised and it's the entire player base veterans and new players alike because they're going into battles and they're either saddled with a team that has no idea or they're being mullered by their new players being mullered and smashed to bits by players who are vastly experienced this is not conduitive to happy players and happy gameplay it's going to lead, and it has led, to more toxicity. It leads to more people becoming annoyed and frustrated and pissed off with the game. 
And what I would say to Wargaming is the following. Stop with the gimmicks. Stop bringing out a premium tank every five minutes. Stop rushing the new players through the tiers. Stop giving the new players an overinflated ego where they think, rightly or wrongly, that they are super duper unicums when they haven't. Take, get rid of the win rates until you've done at least 100 battles. Don't allow anybody to buy a premium tank um, other than those that sit above the tech tree until you've done a minimum of 100 battles. It will not, in my opinion, devalue your player base. It may help in stabilizing it and it may lead to happier players. You just don't know. But what they're doing at the moment is geared to generating money by getting more players into the game to keep and to retain those players for whatever reason and what it's realistically doing is annoying a lot of people new and old players alike so when i go back to the original question which was basically is the game broken i would say no it's not broken it's it's not perfect there are clearly issues and teething problems which i firmly believe are a consequence of update 5.5 um, I think Wargaming are doing whatever they can to try and redress that erroneous consequence, but it's going about it the wrong way. I think that they're listening too much to the new players, um, which they're going to do anyway because obviously they want the new players to stay, but by listening to the new players they are changing the parameters of the tanks too radically to suit a player base that is lacking in experience and to an extent skills which is not good for the game they're allowing players to rush far too quickly they're giving players access to too many premium tanks allowing them to bypass the grind which is where you actually learn to play the game and you learn the experience required to play the game and to understand the strategies involved in the game and it's it's alienating disenfranchising and annoying a lot of people and i would implore wargaming to just take a breather calm down step back and, and re-evaluate your business plan here because you are saturating the game with too much you are inundating everybody with premium tanks left right and center now i've just had a look in my na garage and at this moment in time right now there are 34 premium tanks that i can buy 34 god i've only got five tech tree tanks if i had the money i can buy 34 premium tanks that would therefore give me 37 premium tanks in my garage because I've already got three and the the 34 that are on sale don't include those three that is outrageous and that is leading to an argument that is it becoming pay to win well now it's not becoming pay to win having the premium tank doesn't mean you're going to win all it means is you're flooding the upper tiers with players with no experience and then lack of skills in those tiers stands to reason so that is what I think is wrong with the game at the moment. And that means I have a cause for concern. I don't think it's broken, as I said, but I do have a cause for concern because the way I see this going on the current trend is that more and more players are going to be able to rush in blindly into those top tiers and basically devalue the matchmaker it's led to, to war gaming obviously changing firstly parameters of the tanks and then looking at changing the matchmaker to have a newbie matchmaker why even go that way i mean that's just silly get rid of the newbie matchmaker as i said calm them down stop the new players rushing the tears 
that will save a lot of the problems that are currently faced in this game. Now, it's not going to remove the saltiness. Nothing will remove that. You're always going to get salty people. It won't remove the trolls. You're still going to get those as well. But it will reduce the amount of toxicity. Um, I, I'm convinced of that. And it will make for a happier player base, both new players and old players alike. That's just my opinion. That's me on my soapbox talking about what I consider to be the current state of the game. And by the way, that's a fantastic mastery by my good friend Fizzy11. Now, I'm not saying I'm right. That's just my opinion. By all means, the idea of this video is to stimulate the debate. Um, I love this game, by the way. And obviously, you know, I, I, I get very passionate about the game. And I, I play the game for the enjoyment purposes and enjoyment and fun. By all means, comment and all the stuff below. If you haven't pressed subscribe yet, please do. It's a nice thing to do. If you've got any decent replays, send them to me in my usual email address. It's on the screen. You can even join my Discord server and upload them there. You can also follow me Facebook, Twitter, and even Instagram. And guys, remember, it's just a game. So stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield. And happy tanking. Because really, that is what it is all about. Having fun and being happy.